I spent the last 10 hours trying to make Frostmoth work in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet singles, and I finally did it. Join me on a journey of hardship, excitement, and frustration as we put the ice cold moth to the test in the arena with the best of the best. As always, if you want to see daily high quality Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi Fi battles, be sure to subscribe if you're new and leave a like on the video. Also, stick around till the end of the video for a rental code of the final team. Disclaimer, in this video we will be trying to make Frostmoth a top tier threat in the Smogon overused tier, not 3v3 or 4v4 ranked. However, if you wish to use this team in those formats, by all means, I'll be following item clause. Phase 1, crafting a suitable starting team. First and foremost, I had to craft a base team to start off with, something that would cover for Frostmoth's weaknesses and also support it to allow it to sweep. For the first rendition of the team, I came up with a moveset of Quiverdance, Ice Beam, Bug Buzz and Terror Blast with Terra Water to hit those fire types. 252 EVs in special second speed with a timid nature, pretty standard stuff to be honest with you. I also paid up with Alolan Ninetales to get the Aurora Veil up and Snow to boost its physical defense. Next up I decided to put Walking Wake on the team to make up for our fire and steel weaknesses outside of Terra Water on Frostmoth and also provide fast specially offensive support as well. Seemed good on paper despite it not really benefiting from the snow. Up next to cover off our stealth rot weakness, I figured Great Tusk would be a great choice. Acting as a powerful physically offensive Pokemon with Rapid Spin to clear the rocks, and I figured Rapid Spin would be best over Defog so we can keep our Aurora Veil up. Then I had to think of a way to make it easier for Frostmoth to set up, so I decided to dip into the lower tiers and pick Galvantula as a sash lead to set up sticky webs to reduce the speed of Pokemon such as Dragapult, making it easier for Frostmoth to outspeed the opposing Pokemon once it sets up a Quiver Dance. Finally, I needed a Ghost type to block Rapid Spins and also needed another physical attacker, so ended up going with Cerule Edge with a solid weakness policy moveset. So there it is, the first draft of the Frostmoth team complete. Now it was on to the next phase. Testing the team. So now onto the best part of making any Pokemon work, the team testing phase. So naturally, I went to the best place to get Pokemon Wi-Fi battles, the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord server. There's a link in the description down below. And got to testing the team. The following is the first of many battles I had with this team. Okay, here is the first test of the, the first rendition of the Frostmoss team. Uh, Bam from the Discord server was so kind enough to give me some time to test this team out and I said to him I said bring as much of an OU team as possible and he's definitely delivered he's got the free <laughs> oh wow this is gonna be a powerful team to take on I don't really know how Frostmoth could pull through here like maybe after a few quiver dancers it could like but that Blissey we're gonna have to break through that with the Great Tusk or Sruledge with close combat and uh, that's for sure but I'll mainly be looking at like what weaknesses my team has throughout this battle and it looks like there's a lot to be fair <laughs> okay so let's see what Bam leads off with it leads off with Blissey. Ugh. Blissey's the one thing that I just can't break through with Frostmoth no matter what I do. So having like a strong fighting type on this team is going to be really important. I was debating on getting rid of Hydro Steam since I'm running Snow on the team. But um, Hydro Steam comes in clutch for when like my opponents bring a Torkoal and stuff. Since Sun is pretty prevalent in the OU tier right now. So I might leave Hydro Steam on there. I don't know. I'll experiment between Hydro Pump and Steam. They actually just switched their Torkoal into a, a, a Walking Wake. I could have easily gone for a Hydro Steam in the sun then. All right, there we go. We set up on the Aurora Veil, which is going to be really handy for my Frostmoth, especially with that Raging Bolt. They go for the Rapid Spin, which is absolutely fine. And that's another problem with Sticky Webs. It's easy to clear them up. And lots of things have Heavy Duty Boots as well. So I really don't know if a Sticky Webs is super beneficial for this because I'm going to want at least two Quiver Dancers on Frostmoth, um, which is definitely situation i want to be in i think if i've got any chance of getting rid of getting this team like beat with frost moth i need to get rid of that blissey because it's just an absolute nightmare oh they froze my cerule edge what is going on why is this like i'm trying to test frost moth in ou and there's just hacks galore right now like what is going on yeah we take that like an absolute champ we absolutely take that like a champ so we can definitely go for equivalence here this could be the way to go because I don't know what the Blissey can actually do to Frostmoth, really. So I think we go for Equivodance here. It might be a bit early, but we'll see if we can do it. And then we'll see, get a good scope on ha what kind of damage our Frostmoth is going to deal against their entire team. Because they do have like, they have three Dragon types. They've got a Ground type. Like Frostmoth, this is perfect for Frostmoth, really. But they're going to Terror as well. What type are they going to go into, though? That's the real question. So they Terror into a Water type. That's not good. We can only hit with Bug Buzz now, which is annoying um i didn't terror purely because 
Well, I, I, there's nothing really can, they can do to us super effectively, but we had a Quiver Dance up, which is nice. We can definitely take any hit from this Raging Bolt, that's for sure. So Bug Buzz is doing a good 45%, which is not too bad considering he's got a Calm Mind up. And their Dragon Pulse is still doing nothing because of the Aurora Veil. Nearly finishes off the Raging Bolt, and they just go for another Dragon Pulse because they basically just have to try and out, like, get as much damage on the Frost Muff, because Frost Muff's clearly a threat right now, right? Uh, but the Aurora Veil has wore off, so we do kind of need to wrap this up with the Raging Bolts. I don't know whether Thunderclap plus one KOs us with the Aurora Veil gone. They go for the Thunderclap, and that doesn't KO Frostmoth. So Frostmoth actually tanks are like a champ. And we get the KO on the Raging Bolt. So we got Frostmoth to do something, uh, which is always nice, I guess. Especially when they tear a water and make it so that we basically can't touch them outside of Bug Buzz. But I don't know what we're going to do against the rest of the team, to be honest with you. Hmm. Let's go for an Ice Beam and just see how much damage it does first and foremost. But they actually withdraw. Are they trying to bait something? They go into Madea. That's the Torkoal. The Blissey. Okay, Blissey comes in. Let's see how much a plus one spare Ice Beam does to a Blissey. Uh, not a bad amount of damage, to be fair. I mean, it's, it's still, you know, we already knew Blissey was going to be a big threat. So I don't think Frostmoth is doing more than this. I do want to see what Blissey has for Frostmoth though, so for the sake of the test, I'm going to leave it in. Uh, Ice Beam comes through. Nice bit of damage. They Thunder Wave us. Okay. Do they not have an attacking move? Because if Blissey doesn't normally run attacking moves, because I don't face many Blisseys on Wi-Fi because Stall is kind of deterred thanks to the 20 minute timer, but... They go for a Soft Boil. Okay, so this Blissey is just going to heal up, so that's annoying. Um, I guess, let's see if we get the Ice Beam freeze, that'd be funny. So they go for an Ice Beam of their own, which actually doesn't KO us, even though we had 8 HP left. Frostmoth with Ice Scales is just really, especially bulky. Oh, we got the freeze on the Blissey. Oh, wow. Okay, so Frostmoth lives to see another day thanks to the freeze. So they have to switch out their Blissey because Frostmoth is just too good and freezes everything. And they go into Lord Shinzo the Torkoal. Gets the Drought up. And uh, we go for another Quiver Dance. So we, we, have, we definitely have to outspeed the Torkoal the next turn. So getting Frostmoth to do as much as it's done is pretty awesome, to be fair. As long as we don't get fully paralyzed and get screwed over, we should be all right. So I guess I just Terra Blast here. So I'm going to Trash Dice and Terra Blast. They withdraw the Torkoal. They wanted to get the Sun up, probably. And they go into Nabir, which is going to be the Walking Wake. Okay, Walking Wake comes in. Gets that Pro Synthesis in the Speed. And this is something we need to look at for the team as well, because Protosynth's this um, speed, like with Torkoal running around with Sun, it's going to be a big problem for my Quiver Dancing Frostmoth, because I'm pretty sure I need to get two Quiver Dancers up to outspeed most of the tiers, so. So there we go, the Hydro Steam does finish off the Frostmoth. There was nothing I could really do with Frostmoth in the rest of that game. It was paralyzed and had 2 HP, so like, what was I meant to do with it there? But uh, made some valuable notes, I guess, and... Here's to another three hours of battling with this team, eh? After another few hours later of battling, this is what I decided need to be changed, along with some insight from the Battle Hub Discord members as well. First of all, I noticed from my first practice game that I had zero switchings to Pre-Marina, which is a pretty common Pokemon in Smogon overused singles. And I also had problems with Court Change Cinderace constantly swapping my Sticky Webs and Aurora Veil. So I decided to get rid of Sticky Webs, as it didn't seem to help, especially with all the Mons having like Heavy Duty Boots and Dragapult especially having clear body sometimes. Trick Room does kind of wreck the team, but it's not very common in singles, so I'm not too worried about it. Also, we have no knockoff support on the team, which can be really helpful for getting rid of items on clutch Pokemon like Choice Scarf users and Choice Specs users. So back to the drawing board we go. And the second rendition of the team looks a little something like this. Frostmoth with Heavy Duty Boots, Quiver Dance, Ice Beam, Bug Buzz, Terra Blast with Terra Ground this time, same EV spread. Alolan Ninetales to set up the Aurora Veil, of course, and to support Frostmoth and other members of the team. Next, we still have Walking Wake, which has been changed to a Choice Specs set with Flip Turn to force switches and get Frostmoth a free switch in. Fourth, we have Great Tusk for hazard clearing and support with Stealth Rocks, and we've also put Knockoff on it this time. In fifth, we have Cerulege still, which has now got the Focus Sash with a simple Weak Armor Swords Dance set. Finally, we have Galarian Sloking, who can set up the snow as well with Chili Reception and get free switches into Frostmoth. So now that we have our new team, we can get to testing it. I decided to go into the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord once again to look for battles, which you should definitely join, by the way. There's a link in the description down below. And spent a few more more hours battling. Here's the first of many battles I had with this revised team. Okay, this is the first test with the second rendition of the Frostmoth team. 
Hopefully it goes well. I'm going against Cloud from the Discord. Thanks for taking the time to battle me for this P-roll footage. Gotta love it. So obviously I've got to watch out for that Cinderace because... Uh, Frostmuff and Ninetales are both weak to it, and Sucker Punch is going to sting my walking wake a bit if it's uh, pretty, if it's Libero. Um, but other than that, we should be all right. Okay, let's see what they lead off with. They lead off with a Great Tusk, because I led off with the Ninetales, so we're already off to a good start with the uh, lead, at least. I think getting up the Aurora Veil is going to be really important for the Frostmuff to work, so I'm going to go for it, as they do bring in the Cinderace, which tells me either they're here to attack my Ninetales or they're here to Court Change. Court Change is a bit of a problem for this team. But there's not really any way to prevent court change other than KOing the, the Cinderace straight away. So I'll just bring Great Tusk in and hope for the best. Hopefully they don't go for a court change. That's all I can really hope for. Um, they might go for a Willow. Um, they do go for a court change though. So great, I got footage of court change, which is great. So they go for a Willow Wisp. Oh, okay, so Willow Wisp is to support Cinderace. That's interesting. Okay, so now we bring in the Frost Moth. This Iron Crown, you guys won't have seen it, but. It's set up a Calm Mind and an Agility. It's very threatening. It's going to go for Attacking Uncut, probably. Or a Stored Power, expecting the Terror. But we've set up a Future Sight, which hopefully takes it out. So I'm going to try and go for the Quiver Dance. This is probably going to fail miserably, but oh well. There we go. We're going to Terrestrialize into a Ground Type. And hopefully this works out for us and Frostmoth can do something. Um, but I have a feeling we're going to go down to a Stored Power. I don't think uh, special scales, ice scales, is going to really help us here. And um, they do go for solar power, and it does half. So we go for a quiver dance, which means we can take the next one better. Which means we will live the next one, and let's see if the future sight takes them out. I don't think it will though. It does. So we got a quiver dance up on the frost moth, and the iron crown is no longer a problem. Let's go. Let's go with frost moth. Greninja comes in. This thing's going to have water shuriken if it's bringing it in like this. Um, let's just go for the bug buzz anyway. And they do have the water shuriken. Can we take it? <gasps> we eat that up like it's nothing thanks to ice scales. Even if they're loaded dice, that's that's not KOing us. Unless they get a crit. Hit four times, still didn't even KO the frost moth from half health. That is crazy good damage. And the Greninja is toast. Okay, frost moth's actually pointing in work right now. I think this set is the one I want to roll with. I'm just not sure about the rest of the team. Iron Boulder comes in. This thing is going to have booster energy and speed probably. It does have booster energy. Is it speed? It is speed. So this thing's going to take us out no problem here. But we at least know that, you know, we can take water shurikens from Greninjas, which isn't too bad. Let's Terra Blast and see what happens. They go for a Sacred Sword that's going to take us out. Yeah, so GG Frost Moth. <laughs> oh, well, um, that's a shame. But we know Frost Moth can take hits from certain Pokemon. Like it can take a Stored Power from an Iron Crown. It can take water shurikens with Terra Ground from... Uh, Greninjas, which is really good to know. Um, but I guess it's time for more testing. After doing some more testing, I noticed some changes I need to make to the team, taking us one step closer to perfection. Well, close to perfect. In the world of competitive Pokemon, there is unfortunately no way to make a definitively perfect Pokemon team. Which means no matter how good a Pokemon is, there's always going to be something out there that puts a stop to it. Some more than others, but that's the beauty of it. You can literally make anything work under the right conditions, match up, etc. Anyway, enough of the Elite Four Karen talk. Here's the final team that allows Frostmoth to really shine, in my opinion. So for the final rendition of the team, we didn't need to change much, really. With the help of hours of testing and insight from the Battle Hub Discord, we came to this conclusion. Just don't use Frostmoth. But for real, we came up with the following. Frostmoth with the usual set of Quiver Dance, Ice Beam, Bug Buzz, and Terra Blast with Terra Ground. I was going to put Substitute over Bug Buzz, but every time I did that, someone would bring a Slow King, like the Johto Slow King. And I would be like, oh, I need Bug Buzz. That's, that's the beauty of Pokemon. You never know what's going to come around the corner. We put Ogapon Wellspring over Walking Weight to give more physical prowess on the team since Frostmoth is going to be our main special attacker. We also changed Bulk Up on Great Tusk to Stealth Rocks because Stealth Rocks really helped the team. I can't believe I didn't put Stealth Rocks on in the first place. But that is about it. Now to finally demonstrate the power of this team. No, the power of Frostmoth. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy this epic battle in which Frostmoth finally becomes a top tier threat. In my opinion. Okay, this is test number 19 of the Frostmoth team trying to get a sweep with the Frostmoth against a full hardcore OU team. And it looks like Frostmoth has actually found a team that it could plow through. We just need to weaken that Clodzire, weaken the Sloking a little bit, and we've got to watch out for Terra. 
Um, I think, hi Dragon, if we can switch in on a Draco Meteor, like after it's used Draco Meteor, um, we could potentially set up some Quivered Answers. But um, thank you, Myth Buster, what's your name? <laughs> Myth Trainer Bam for joining me on this journey. Um, he's not the one I've been battling 19 times in a row. He's just the first one that I've battled that's actually had a, you know, a team that Frostmoth could actually potentially do something against. So, let's just get straight into the game. Okay, let's start this battle. Let's see what they lead off with. Nabushi, the Samurai, nice and shiny as well. Love it. We let off with Ninetales. I let off with Ninetales because I want to get the Aurora Veil up straight away. And also because it also does pretty well against their entire team, being a um, freeze-dry user. So I'm going to Aurora Veil straight away. They don't have a Defogger. They have a Rapid Spinner in the Great Toast. They actually <laughs> Terror straight away with the Samurai. What is this Samurai going to do to me? What Tyra type is it? Steel? Ground? Terror Ground? What the Frost Moth? Okay, we go for... Oh, they go for a taunt! They outspeed us? How do they outspeed us? How? Are they Choice Scarf Taunt with Terra Ground? Are you actually being serious right now? So they withdraw. So he's really trying to make it hard for me to settle with my Frost Moth because I need that Aurora Veil. Vale. They're going to go into Namar, which is going to be what? The Slow King. So Slow King can definitely take a Freeze Dry, that's for sure. How well? Well. Pretty well. Pretty well, to be fair. Um, it could have Future Sight and all that stuff. Um, probably goes for a Fire Type move, if anything, or Chili Reception. So, I'm going to go into my good old Focus Sash Cerule Edge. Is it, imagine it being Terra Ground Choice Scarf Taunt. That is an interesting one, that's for sure. So, um, we'll bring Cerule Edge in to take care of this thing. They go for a Thunder Wave. Ah, good I didn't bring Frostmoth in. I was actually debating Frostmoth as well. Um, but, you know, this is fine. We can go for a Poltergeist. They will switch out here, so I can go for a close combat. We should be able to catch, hopefully, the Hydreigon on the switch in. If not, yeah, no, 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 no. We, we've got a Focus Sash. We can just go for a Poltergeist. It's fine. Poltergeist comes through. They still get outsped. They probably didn't realize they were going to get outsped there. But remember how I said Sloking needed to go for me to get the Frostmoth sweep? It's gone now. It's gone now. So this could be the game. After nine... <laughs> Like, that's 19, like, 19 games, and they're all, like, 10 to 15 minutes long, except from one, which was, like, 8 minutes long, and that was a Cerule Edge sweep. <laughs> anyway, in comes, I mean, that's the Samurai, right? Yeah, the Samurai comes in, so we can weaken this thing, which is great, or we can go for a bit. I I'm going to go for the Poltergeist, because I really want to see if it is Choice Scarf. They go for a Ceaseless Edge, and Spike's going to sting, but we got the Focus Sash, which is fine. And then their spikes are up. We get the weak armor as well, so we might actually outspeed them the next turn. But, um, yeah, there's the spikes, so that's unfortunate. Let's see what they do here. Let's poltergeist them. Yeah, Choice Scarf. It's Choice Scarf Torn. That's interesting. It's a very anti-lead um, Samurai. That's interesting. So, um, now we can get our Aurora Veil up because we can switch in. We'll use Thrillage's Death Fodder later, potentially. And uh, we'll go into our Nine Tails. I can't believe how perfect this matchup is because it is a full OU team barring Hydreigon, which is UUBL, I think, and Sloking. But like, Frostmoth is actually putting in the work here, I can tell. So Ceaseless Edge comes through. They're going to get another layer of spikes up. We do have the boots on the uh, Frostmoth, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the Aurora Veil up. That's definitely going to be needed because Frostmoth's physical defense is not very good. Right, they withdraw. So they're going to withdraw into what? The Hydreigon, maybe? Uh, no, it won't be the Hydreigon because it can't Terror. Caesar. That's the Rillaboom. Okay, Rillaboom comes in. Has he got Brick Break or something? Probably. They're probably, like, really anti-screens on this team. Choice Scarf Taunt and Brick Break Rillaboom, maybe? I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a reason they brought the Rillaboom in, right? Um, and it's definitely not just to heal me. So what do I do? Do I go for a Freeze Dry? Do I Scout? Yeah, I freeze right here. I have to put some pressure on this Rillaboom. I need to put some pressure on this Rillaboom. If it's Brick Break, then that's a problem and we should freeze dry it. They withdraw. They wanted to just get the grassy terrain up, I guess. And um, they're going to go into Nabushi, which is the Samurott to let it die. We go for a freeze dry and down it goes. So we've got four Pokemon left for Frostmoth to get rid of somehow. They've already terrored, so we don't have to worry about surprise terror. That Clodzire needs to be taken care of. But I think Frostmoth can two-shot. If it's unaware, I think Frostmoth can still two-shot it with Ice Beam. I think. 
Hanzo the S comes in. That's Claude's Eye. So Claude's Eye comes in. It's going to do something. I'm going to go Cerulege and just sack it off. And get a free switch in with my uh, Frostmoth. They could have Toxic on this thing, so I need to be careful. So we'll withdraw our Vimto. And we'll go straight into the Cerulege just to sack it off to the Spikes. They probably go for a Stealth Rock, if anything. Um, but just in case they go for a Toxic, I don't want to switch in my Frostmoth, that's for sure. Um, so they go for a Toxic. Yeah, they went for a Toxic. So they were trying to get me. They were trying to get my Frostmoth put on a timer. So what we need to do here is... We need to bait something to come in. We need to get the Rillaboom in, we need to get the Hydreigon in, or we need to get the Great Tusk in. So I think Great Tusk is a perfect Pokemon to do that. Because we can Rapid Spin those Spikes. Actually, no, we don't need to Rapid Spin the Spikes. All we need to do is weaken this thing. They definitely switch out. Clod's Eye is going to be important for them to not get swept by the Frostmoth. They must know that. So we make a double into Frostmoth right now. So Great Tusk comes back. Hopefully this works out. Hopefully this works out. <laughs> I'm really hoping because this is... I'm tired. Oh, they read me like a book and they toxic me. I could have headlong rushed this Clod's Eye into oblivion. So... Is it Water Absorb, though, or is it the other thing? I don't know. All I know is that I'm toxic, which puts me on a timer. Um, We should outspeed everything on the team anyway. We should KO everything on the team as well. Let's Quiver Dance. We, we, we need one Quiver Dance. One Quiver Dance. They protect... Perfect! A free Quiver Dance. That's what we needed. Quiver Dance comes through. They're really, they're really going to Toxic Storm my Frostmoth, aren't they? To the point where Rillaboom's Grassy Glide will take it down. But the uh, Grassy Terrain is healing me, so that's not too bad. Let's see how much a the grass disappeared from the field. Let's see how much an Ice Beam does, first and foremost. They withdraw. What do they withdraw into to take an Ice Beam? What do they actually do? Lord Ainu? Or Ainu? Great Tusk. You do not take an Ice Beam, right? I don't think you do. Protosynthesis in what? Attack? Ah, oh, that's fine. Ice Beam comes through. Frostmoth takes care of Great Tusk, I'm assuming. Yep, yeah, there we go. Look how tiny Frostmoth is compared to Great Tusk. That's wild. I mean, I know it's, it's literally a moth, but... <laughs> in comes Hanzo the S again, the uh, Clod's Eye. This thing's going to go for... I know exactly what it's doing. It's going for a... Protect. So, we have to go into Ogre Pond first and foremost. Do we? Maybe I should have put Moonlight on this Frostmoth. No, I don't think we do. I think we go into... No. I think we go into Great Tusk. I think we switch out. They're not going to expect us to switch after we Quivered. That's for sure. But I I don't, I think if we get the Aurora Veil, I don't think we need Quiver Dance to sweep the Hydreigon and the, um, the Rillaboom. We just need that. Oh, they go for a Recover. Oh, the Toxic Stalling. Yeah, that's not going to work on me, buddy. I am going for that Headlong Rush right now. Headlong Rush comes through. That Clod's Eye is dead. Yep, Claw's Eye is dead. So now we just got Hydreigon and Gra and the um, Rillaboom to take care of. So Hanzo the S is going to go down. Auroravel should wear off this turn, right? Yeah, there we go. There he goes. Caesar comes in. That's got to be the Rillaboom, right? Yeah, the Rillaboom. I'm trying to remember the names. Grassy Surge comes through. That's going to heal my um, Frostmoth, which is great. We go for a knockoff just in case it's banded. They go for a grassy glider. That's going to take us out, right? Yeah, it takes us out. So there we go. We've got some Rocky Helmet Chip. But we should be all right here um, to go into Ninetales and to get an Aurora Veil up. I'm thinking. I am really debating it, but part of me thinks we're not going to be able to take a grassy glide. We have to try it, though. We get the snow up. It boosts our defense. Grassy glide only base 55. We are going to get hit by spikes. But there's no Stealth Rocks to really dig into us, so that's great. So we go for a Aurora Veil here. They go for a Grassy Glide. Nearly gets the KO. We get the Aurora Veil, which is great. Frostmoth can do something now. Frostmoth can do something now. Because we can definitely take a Grassy Glide. That is definitely a banded Rillaboom right there as well. It's got to be banded. It's got to be banded. So we'll go for a Freeze Dry now. They go for another Grassy Glide. Take us out. That's fine. Not bothered about Ninetales going down after it set up the Aurora Veil and the Snow. That's for sure. So, the question is, can we take a Grassy Glide with Frostmoth? I think we can. 
But also, can we take a Fire Blast or a Flash Cannon from the Hydreigon? We go for the Ice Beam to find out. They go for a Grassy Glide. Let's see how much it does. Nothing. Absolutely zero damage. This should KO, though. It does. Nice. Frost Moth. That was a crit. I don't think the crit mattered because it's a banded Rillaboom by the looks of it. Um, and Frost Moth has got a really high special attack. So we should, we, we should be all right here. I think if they go into Hydreigon, we should be able to take it out with an Ice Beam. We should live a Fire Blast. But they bring King Hydra in. The Hydreigon. And we Terra Ground Ice Beam. Because we want to be able to take that Fire Blast or a Flash Cannon. That's for sure. So we Terra Ground. Ice Scales and Aurora Veil stop us from going down to a Fire Blast. Because Fire Blast might still have KO'd us here. Especially if they're Specs. Especially if they're Specs. Which they could be. They go for the Fire Blast. They hit the Fire Blast. It does absolutely zero. Yep, zero damage. Great. We go for an Ice Beam. Frost Moth nearly KOs the Hydreigon. But it's fine. Even after Toxic, we should take another Fire Blast here. If they, could, they could drop a Draco. The Grass disappeared, which means we don't get healed anymore. Which is sad. But now we go for a Bug Buzz just, just because why not. They missed the Fire Blast, but that's fine because it wasn't going to KO us anyway. Bug Buzz comes through. Down goes the Hydreigon. And I finally... It wasn't like a Quiverdance 4 -0 sweep. But after 19 attempts, we finally got Frost Moth to actually do something really good in battle. Like, it puts so much pressure on that team. Like, that's amazing. So, uh, finally, I can rest easy. I can rest easy. GG, bam. But yeah, thank you so much for watching through this. Please let me know if there's anything you would change about the team. I'd love to hear your insights. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this journey. Let me know if you would like to see more videos like this by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit. Also, yes, I'm aware that Frostmoth looks like it has boobs in the thumbnail. Leave me alone.